taking a look at 11 point uh, exploration on page 334, part A. Okay, we have all that data. They're asking you to order it on this strip with 24 equally spaced. So order it, make sure you're going from least to greatest there. When it talks about folding the paper in half on part B there, just go ahead and just use the boxes there. You don't have to fold anything in half. Just note that this is the halfway point, and this is half of half. That's half of the other half. Cool box and whisker blocks. Let's see how we did here. Okay, first piece, put our data in order. Notice once you put the data in order and you have uh, the halfway point, that is your median. Okay, there are five different numbers that we're going to use when we're making a box and whisker plot. And this, this, uh, this exploration kind of highlights those numbers. One is called your least value. A lot of times called your lower extreme. also known as your minimum. Okay. And your greatest value, which is also called your upper extreme. Also known as your maximum. Okay. And then you have your first quartile where that where that median of the lower half of the data is. So once you find the median of all of the data, you then take half of that data and find the median again. That's called your lower or your first quartile. And then you find the median of the upper half of the data. We call that our third quartile. Okay. Which one's the second? Yeah, probably in the middle there. Think of it kind of in, broken in there. Okay. So if you take a look at exploration or part C, go ahead and turn the page there. Next page. All right, explain how the box and whisker plot represents the data. So what they've done is they've taken the data that we have here and they put it into a box and whisker plot. Okay, so notice that you have your smaller value your greater value. So if you if you're kind of comparing the two, I don't know if you can see both of those there. Okay, you have your least, your greatest, you have your median, you have your first quartile, your third quartile, and they've got it all set up there. Okay, the box and whisker pl plot here. Notice it's it takes this box and it puts it on like a sliding scale here, and it helps you to see where most of your data lies. One thing to keep in mind about a block, box and whisker plot, this piece right here, from this point to this point, that is one-fourth of your data, or 25% of the numbers fall in that range there. So notice from the least value to the first quartile, here to here, that's one-fourth of our numbers. And you can kind of see that when we put it in that format. It's just when it's on here, that's not one-fourth of the entire length. Okay, from here to here, from our first quartile to our median, what percentage of the number is that? It's also 25. And then from here to here, same as here to here, that's still 25. And then from here to here, and here to here, that's also 25. So we had 100% of our numbers, but they're broken into these different categories where you have your your box and the whiskers. What do we notice, or I guess why would this this be bigger or longer than say this piece right here if they both represent the same percent of our data? Okay. Yeah, the median's closer to the lower quarter. This the median here is ten. That's closer, a little closer to the four than it is to the seventeen. But the ten is definitely closer to the smaller value. Right, the lower extreme. 10 is closer to 0 than it is to 45, so that median slides our data downward a bit, at least those, those points. What do you notice about this data compared to this data? Yeah? Yeah, 
a lot of repeating numbers here, whereas this data is not so much. This data also has a, look at the range of this data compared to this data. What's the range of this data? 10. What's the range of this data? 35. Okay, this data has, a, it's more spread out. When we talk about measures of spread, this, this data is more spread out than this data. This is really condensed. Bunch of bunch of numbers really close together, some that repeat themselves, whereas this data is spread out, and you can kind of see that on your graph here. Okay? That's kind of how box and whisker plots help us. When we're interpreting this, what I want you to do is take a look at number three here. Let's go ahead and try to interpret this. The body mass index of students in ninth grade. Okay? Interpret the box and whisker plot. In other words, first find the find your five measures. Okay? Find your five measures there. We call that the five number summary. So that's the first thing you want to do is find the five number summary. Find the five number summary as easy as just going, well, that's 17. Look at each of the dots. That's 17, that's 19, that's 21, that's 22, and that's 28. Those are our five numbers. That's just putting a label on them. What's this one called? Lower extreme, also known as our minimum. Okay. Lower extreme 17. This one is? First quartile. This one? And that one? So part of this is just learning the terms. And then the last one? What can you guys tell me about the data? Actually, come up with one thing you can tell me just by looking at the box and whisker plot. You guys tell your neighbor. Come up with one thing that will work out. You can grab from that. The median is closer to the... No, it's closer to the um, lower extreme than it is to the upper extreme. You think, John? Yeah, the median is closer to the Huh? What do you think? You think, um, hmm? Where's most of your data? Where's most of your data? Uh, the last part. Last part. Yeah. More data here? Yeah. No. No, in the first part. Right here? Smaller. No. In the middle part. It's more of the data, like, at the beginning of the graph and the end. Okay. Hey, let's, guys, let's make sure we've got this. Wait, no, there's not more data. It's like, it's just closer together. Good. Hey, you guys, when we're describing these things, let's make sure we're clear. There is, like, we don't have more data right here, right? Or, excuse me, right here than we do right here. We have the same same number of data points. They're just more spread out here. Yeah, there's a greater range between in the top 25% than there is in the bottom 25%. However, they both contain 25% of our data. You could say that 75% of our data is less than 22. You could say that the inner quartile range, which is this number right here, so there's another term you should put down, the inner quartile range, that's the box part. The inner quartile range is, that's between 19 and 22, okay? That's 50% of your data. You get that middle 25%. That's the inner quartile range. 
we can say half of our data lies between 21 and 28. So a lot of different things you can pull from that. This data is skewed. It's not a perfect bell-shaped curve, right? You guys remember talking about that the other day? Yeah, the little curve. It's it's skewed. The majority of it's the majority of it's over here, right? So it's skewed to the right. Okay, we'll talk a little more about that another day. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Hey, um, if you look at page 336, there's some more information about box and whisker plots. Uh, we talked about quartiles, five number summary, the interquartile range. We've, we've hit all those things. It kind of summarizes it there as well, if you want to read a little more about it. What I'd like you to do is take a look at this piece right here. I just kind of referenced that in terms of our, uh, our last one. When I said this data is skewed to the right, we talked about that curve last week. Well, when you look at it, if you see a longer tail, the side that has the longer tail is where it's skewed. This data is skewed to the right. This data is skewed to the left. This one is symmetric because the tails are the same. Or the width. I guess we shouldn't call them tails. We should call them whiskers. The whiskers are the same. Okay? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's a bummer deal, huh? Only one whisker. Oh, well, two. I guess one on each side. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, lovely. Looks like a robotic cat or a creepy looking cat that's smiling at you. Wait, is that a nose? Yeah, what do you think, man? <laughs> Wouldn't the nose be like in between the whiskers though? That's a flathead cat. We can't we can't keep going Mark with this. Hold on. Well, why is it that you're like way down here? <laughs> I don't know. I need to take drawing lessons from John. Okay. Well it's here from like not like down here. Oh no, I don't want to hear about it. Okay, let's move on. Jonathan, get me some drawing lessons. Okay, I want you guys to uh, take a look at the bottom of page 337. I think it's entertaining the way you learn. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's um, let's go ahead and make a box and whisker plot. So number one, first thing you need to do from this data is you need to come up with all five of those numbers. Let's let's come up with our lower, our upper, our median, our first quartile and our third quartile. Let's hit those five numbers. Helps if you put them in order first. I'll give you that hint. Looks like our median is 7, lower is 4, upper is 9. Oh, there's an O. All right, and so, yeah, to find our, to find our uh, median of our lower, tell your neighbor what you did there. Or our first quartile. First, between 5 and 7 is 5.5. And then between 8 and 8 is 0, so it's just 8. So you have your lower set of data, and you got to, take halfway between 5 and 6. Add them up, divide by 2, you get 5.5. Same thing here to find the next one. That just happens to be 8. So, so now, would you mind letting her in? What? That's Giannis. So now it's as simple as 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go all the way up to 9. Okay. Once we get our number line there, try to keep everything equally spaced. Then I'm going to put a dot above each of those points. So we got our four, 
We've got our five and a half. We've got our seven. We've got our eight. And we've got our nine. Five dots. The three middle dots get a line on them. Connect those lines and make the box. And then make the whiskers. Put our values above. There's four. There's nine. There's seven. Eight. Five and a half. You've now created your box and whisker plot. Is this data skewed at all? Yes. Yeah, a little. Kind of a little to which way? To the left. To the left, to the left. Okay? You're good. Questions? All right. Okay. I want you to answer question three with your groupies, please, on the next page. Question three. I only run if something's chasing me. Oh. They don't do that in basketball. Unless they're bad defense. Okay. I'm agile. I'm fast, but I can't run. Hey, part A, find and interpret the range. All right, what's the range? 16. 16, good. So we have we have our 24.5 minus 8.5. We get 16. What does the range mean? Someone from the back of the room there. Yeah. Okay. Highest number. In, and so in context of this problem, what does it mean? What does the highest number represent? Okay. Yes. The highest price of a soccer ball. Lowest number represents? Lowest price. So what, when we say the range is 16, what is? how can we state that in context of this problem? It's around 16. It, it, it's not that the price costs 16. It's the price is range, $16. So like if you're shopping for a soccer ball, I mean, that's a big difference. You're like, okay, I want to go get a soccer ball. Well, you could spend 8.5 bucks or $24.50. It ranges. Okay, so if you're either that's an amazing sale price for a good soccer ball, or maybe it's a piece of junk soccer ball. Okay, it, the prices range; they vary by sixteen dollars. Okay, describe the distribution of the data. Where's the majority of the data? Yeah, remember, guys, when I ask that question, I'm really trying to trick you a bit. The, look, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. So you can't say most of the data is up here because this whisker's longer. That just means the data is more spread out up there. Okay, but the same number of points are here as they are here. Okay, we could say 25% of the prices are between $20.25 and 24 and $24.50. You could say that 75% of the prices are less than $20.25. Yeah, we'll get to you eventually. Okay? <laughs> Very good. So there's a lot of things you could interpret, but it all bases back to this 25% deal. Okay, so we have to interpret it based on that. All right? Find and interpret the interquartile range. Tell your neighbor what you got, please. Okay, what'd you guys get? Nine. I hear one nine. nine. How do we get nine? Twenty point twenty five minus eleven point twenty five. Good. Why nine? Okay, interquartile range. Remember, is the box there, so that is equal to nine. The middle half of the prices are no more than, or vary by no more than nine dollars there. Okay. So the middle, we have a $9 range there. Um, are the data more spread out below quadrant one or above quadrant three? Above quadrant three. Good. How do we know? It's skewed right. Yeah, it's skewed right. The whisker's longer. Okay, take a look at number four. It's in kind of a new sit situation there. I want you to answer questions A, B, and C with your groupies. Okay, state A, part A. State A is what? 
What shape is this? No, go back to your shapes. It's just a normal one. Go back to the previous page. Symmetric. Symmetric. Okay. State B is? Skewed right. Skewed right. Skewed yeah. right. Stop. Sorry. Which state's tornadoes are more spread out? State B. Yeah, state B. State B is more spread out. How do we know? Because it has a longer range. Good. Yeah. Longer range. The range and the interquartile range are greater. Okay? So you have a longer... You have the longer box, and you have the longer graph box and whisker piece. Which day had a single least number of tornadoes? Day day. What was that total? Zero. Zero. Remember, there's only there's certain points we can use, and this is one. We know that the least amount is zero. The least here is four. I'm not sure I want to live in this state, quite honestly. Okay. Day day. Yeah, you're about to get it right now. All right, any questions?